Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. This is our morning get-together live here on Facebook, where we examine headlines from our city, our state, our country. We examine information that you share with us or information that comes out of our conversations here, and we try to have a most amazing live as a community of English-speaking locals here in the city of Puerto Vallarta, Jalisco, in Mexico. How about that? Today is Thursday, September 30th, <clears throat> and, um, and we have all kinds of important news to share today that have to do with our new government. We have news about uh, the Kuala uh, Bridge, and we have other kinds of news. I have questions for you today because maybe you will be able to help me understand something that I just don't understand. Uh, but we'll get to that in a second. We have um, also uh, information about uh, the salsa aisle in the supermarket. I'm just wondering how your relationship is with the salsa aisle in the supermarket. And, um, and what else do we have? Oh, okay, the usual um, information. If this is the first time that you join us, Uh, please know that um, we love to hear from new people when they join our broadcast. And if you'd like to let us know that you're new, all you have to do is write the word new in your comment. And uh, when you write the word new, uh, we will just give you a nice little welcome. Uh, also, if you, there's something really particular that you want to bring up during the broadcast, um, um, the Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I get distracted with your comments because your comments are good. Uh, anyhow, if there's something really important that you want to bring up with uh, during the broadcast, add the letter Q kindly. Add the letter Q at the beginning of your comment. Otherwise, I don't know if you're asking me questions or you're talking amongst yourselves. So that helps me keep the show streamlined and uh, and more effective. And that is um, what we have. Let us get started with our news and we'll take it from there. Okay, so today is the swearing ceremony of Puerto Vallarta's new mayor, Luis Alberto Michel. Uh, this takes place today at City Hall with a limited guest list. This happens once Uh, one day before Mayor Michel begins his official term. Uh, this also happens after 
three administrations in which the Movimiento Ciudadano Party ruled our city. Luis Alberto Michel represents the Movimiento de Regeneración Nacional or Morena Party. And this second article also mentions the complete list of people representing different political parties that will now become part of Puerto Vallarta's new council. We still don't know exactly which people are going to run the different departments of the, the city, of the city's administration, because no official announcements have been made. But uh, I'm sure that we're going to get more clarity about that in the near future. As an aside, we also learned that the inauguration of the new Welcome to Puerto Vallarta letters is, is scheduled to take place today. And apparently there was some anticipation to learn whether the outgoing mayor would lead the ceremony or the incoming ones. So I suppose we will find out tomorrow when all the photographs are published about this particular um, event. Now, I said the swearing ceremony, and that's what I wrote in my announcement of the show. And uh, somebody was very quick to correct me and just write swearing in ceremony. So I suppose what's going on is the swearing in ceremony of Puerto Vallarta's new mayor. But that begs a question, and I need you to help me, because I have um, in uh, my uh, 58, 59 years of living, I have never found much pleasure out of uh, correcting other people. I just don't. I don't, I don't, I don't find pleasure in it. And yet, here at Coffee and Headlines, it would seem that at least once a week, somebody decides, okay, it's time to correct me. And uh, so I am just curious, uh, for those of you who do it or have done it, uh, would you explain to me the pleasure you derive from correcting other people? Because I honestly, I don't understand it. Maybe if I understood it, I would go around through life correcting other people. Um, I failed to to in understand it. So if anybody that has corrected me in the past or feels inclined to correct me today or in the future would explain to me what is it that you find pleasurable out of pointing out mistakes to other people, um, maybe I will enjoy doing that because I've never enjoyed correcting people. I enjoy finding ways to connect with people and enlighten them to information they may not know but I certainly don't enjoy correcting people. So enough about that. Again, if you have any useful commentary for me to understand why you insist on correcting others, I would very much appreciate it. Moving on with the news, uh, students attending school in Bahia de Banderas return to school this coming Monday, along with those in the municipality of Compostela, according to this article. This happens after four continuous weeks in which the number of coronavirus cases have has been in steady decline in these two municipalities, both Bahia de Banderas and Compostela, which is um, which is um, much appreciated, and it's very good news. Other municipalities, including Tepic and the municipality of Jalisco in Nayarit, not to be confused with our state, uh, have not been as fortunate, so school is not starting in these other municipalities just yet. Um, in other news, the state of Jalisco's Secretary of Infrastructure and Public Works has announced that reconstruction of the bridge over the Rio Cuale along Insurgentes Street has begun and it will up take approximately three months to complete. There goes the betting, my friends, because three months to complete would be the end of uh, December. So we can start our bets as to whether this will be accomplished or not. Once it is accomplished, it will have had a cost of approximately 7 million pesos. Regarding... Um, the work required along Manantial Street that corrects Puerto Vallarta with Colonia Buenos Aires, Paso Ancho, and beyond, there has been no specific announcement as yet. Uh, hopefully, this will also be addressed. As you know, I walk that street on a regular basis whenever I want to go visit our dear friends in uh, El Jorullo, and it is... Um, it is uh, something that is, it feels treacherous to go down that road. I've seen cars go by it and I've been on a car on it and hopefully it will hold. But we hope also that um, the government will find uh, the schedule and the logistics and whatever they need to fix that road because it's desperately needed as well. 
Um, I picked up a headline indicating that Jalisco's health board is increasing operating hours for bars and restaurants. However, I have been unable to find information to back this up, despite the fact that the article indicated that the information came from Governor Alfaro. I went looking for Governor Alfaro's uh, uh, Facebook page and there's no information to back this information. So I assume we will have an, an updated Announcement in the coming days. This particular article states that the Ac Akron and Jalisco stadiums can increase capacity to 50% and restaurants can go from 50 to 65% and bars can go from 25 to 40% in capacity. Um, this uh, is all happening after hospital occupancy went in our state from 61.4 at the end of August to 38.7 at the end of September. That's almost half as many cases. The number of active cases went from 9,359 to 6,563 in the past three weeks, and positivity went from 27.5 to 17.11 in the same time period. Uh, so this is all very good news. Hopefully we're going on a good direction. Uh, moving right along, Seapal has announced water shortages for today in two colonias, Los Tamarindos and Versailles, for uh, scheduled maintenance work. This is just an FYI. If you are in any one of those uh, two colonias, uh, just make sure you take your showers while you can. Let's jump over to the weathers to see what we have in store for the remainder of this week. Siri and I had a thing once. It didn't end well. She could never understand what I was saying. <laughs> That's really funny, I suppose. Uh, we are enjoying 28 degrees right now. Feels like 33. Humidity is high, 93%. We are enjoying 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and our weather forecast for today calls for rain in the evening. Uh, and a high temperature of 32, low temperature of 24. Friday, tomorrow, uh, we will have a humid and mostly cloudy day with a high temperature of 32, low temperature of 23. Saturday, possible light rain in the evening and overnight with a high temperature of 32 and low temperature of 22. And that is what we have in store. Moving right along to other headlines that I have. Let's see. We keep talking about COVID-19 vaccination, but what about our good old-fashioned flu shots? Authorities from the Secretary of Health have announced that distribution of flu shots this year will begin on the second half of October for a campaign that will begin on November 3rd. So if you get a flu shot, um, please know that they're coming, and this is a good thing to know. Next on the agenda, the word of the day is presumida, presumida, for girls or presumido for boys means boastful or show off or arrogant or all of the above. So what happens when you show off something or boast of something that you're better off keeping to yourself? Well, you can ask the very nice so-called influencer Elvia Martí. She is in this photograph on this news article. She is the wife of a high-ranking employee for the IMSS or Mexican Social Security Institute in Chiapas. Somehow she found herself aboard a government helicopter that was busy distributing vaccines, and the helicopter found itself traveling over Mexico's beautiful and scenic uh, Canyon del Sumidero or Sumidero Canyon. Did she keep it to herself? Of course not. She took some selfies and posted them on social media, uh, writing, of course, I'd be such a fool being here and not sharing some selfies. And a fool she was because her husband, Ivan Tornel Carrillo, was fired. Tomala. And now I want to talk to you about salsas. See, the other day there was an, a question or a comment that took me by surprise when somebody uh, uh, posted a question along the lines of, you know, if you buy a French press, do you have to buy a grinder? And do you guys eat beef or what do you eat? Do you eat tortillas three times a day and whatever? So this question clearly came from someone that doesn't live here. Um, it is a legitimate question, and we kind of dismissed it because, I mean, if you are asking what do we eat, you're clearly not a local, and uh, if you're not a local, you know, coffee and headlines is for locals. But then I got to myself, I got, I got myself thinking, you know, what about 
the products that we have in our supermarket? Do we know them? Do we use them? Do we know about them to buy them? Uh, do we know enough about them to buy them? I mean, it happens to me on a regular basis that I find myself visiting a friend and, I, and he or she may have something fun or useful or tasty at their house. And I will say, um, oh, where did you buy this? And they'll say, well, I bought it at Costco. So it's funny how we go through supermarkets thinking about the, the products and the things that we know and love. But what about things we may not be as familiar with? Which brings me to the salsa aisle. In La Comer, there is an entire aisle devoted to peppers and chiles and salsas. And it occurs to me that you may or may not have a good relationship with this aisle. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my mother. My mother, may she rest in peace. She was a great cook, uh, but she was also a, a practical housewife. And if there is one product that was a staple in my parents' home when I was growing up and continues to be a staple in my pantry, it is this brand of salsas, canned salsas that are the brand Erdes. Erdes, the salsa casera or red sauce or homemade sauce is the equivalent of a fresh pico de gallo uh, that you get at any taco place. And the salsa verde is made with tomatillo. Neither one of them is uh, very, very spicy. And of course, I know that some traditionalists might say, well, Paco, you are Mexican. You're supposed to be making your salsas from scratch. And sometimes I do. But not always. You have to balance your practicality with your authenticity. And then there might be others that might say, well, you know, canned foods are not so healthy. Well, there are a lot of things in this world that are not healthy. What I'm trying to say is please know that um, these are two salsas that I enjoy uh, very much. And if you haven't tried them, I always keep them here in the house. Salsa casera goes great. The one on the left goes great with scrambled eggs. And the one on the right also goes great with scrambled eggs. A lot of times I will uh, just throw a piece of meat in my crock pot and just cover it with either one of these salsas and out comes something really yummy and wonderful. Recently, I discovered another salsa also made by Erdes which is this guacamole salsa, which is not guacamole. It's a crazy name, but it's kind of like an avocado salsa. And I find this really, really tasty. Uh, now, mind you, with this one, you do want to be careful. Notice that this one has a green cap, which means that it's not as, um, as spicy as the one that comes with a red cap. So don't be buying the red cap version of this because the red cap version of this is very spicy. Um, last but not least, I want to do a little bit, and I know this feels like product placement, but what can I tell you? You know, you want to know what we eat? This is what I eat. I just discovered this one, which is uh, a creamy chipotle sauce which is absolutely delicious. This is like my latest new find from Erdes, and I always buy this at the supermarket. Um, and I, I think you may enjoy them. You may not, but in case you have been frightful of shopping the salsa aisle, um, you know, it's not, I mean, these things are like 15 pesos. It's not like you're investing your life savings on one of these if you want to try them out. This is the latest one that I buy, and I put this, okay, I, I put some of this on top of a couple of slices of pizza the other day, and I felt like I was dying and going to heaven. The last product that I want to show you that I always buy and keep in the house is small cans. Look at how tiny this is. Small cans of chipotles. And these, what I like to do with these is a lot of times I will just add some water on these, throw them in the blender, and, and boom, I have chipotle sauce to cook uh, ground beef with and whatever. Um, so that's my, my quick and dirty on things that I buy at the supermarket that have to do with a salsa aisle. There are many brands. There are many brands of salsas, and some of them I've tried, some of them I've liked, some of them I'd rather make at home. But... Um, I encourage you to, you know, explore the local produce, ex explore the local products and, and give them a go. Give them a go. If you don't like them, if they're too spicy, if they're not for you, that's OK. But hey, you know, there's nothing. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to 
chime into this comment that came in right as I'm talking about this from Meggy as in Peggy. Hello, Meggy as in Peggy. To me, one of the best parts of moving to a new country is dying, is I suppose you mean dining, uh, dining new uh, exciting items. Oh, finding, finding new exciting items in the grocery stores. I make it a habit every time I visit a new city in Mexico or even I visit a city that I love. I always make it a point to go to the municipal market. And you are correct. Going to a supermarket um, in a different country is or should be a truly, truly fun experience. And um, and speaking of that, let me go backtrack and, um, and uh, take a look at your comments. Let's see what everybody is thinking about this morning. Um, lots of greetings as always. Uh, oh, Bill, I can relate. We made it over the hump and now we are sliding down towards the weekend. Happy Thursday, everybody. You know, this week I took in extra work. Um, first of all, there's the videos and the photo work that I've been doing for my friend Sebastian in this mail review. I finally delivered all of that uh, that I needed to deliver. And I have a, a, a long documentary type interview that I'm subtitling that I'm finally ending. Uh, this week. So I am really, really looking forward to getting to the weekend. Saturday, I'll go out and play with my friends. And then Sunday, I'm going to the opening of this new mail review that is going to take place at the Palm. And that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, boom, 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 boom. Michael Buford. Hello, Michael. Michael has met our friend Michael Young, who has finally moved here to Puerto Vallarta with his husband. This is great. And I am so glad that they, they went to check out your restaurant. This is absolutely wonderful. Um, let's see what else we have. Any other good food delivery services in Vallarta other than Uber Eats? Dave, I wish I could help you personally. I don't use delivery services myself, but I look forward to other helpful comments you might get from the community. Uh, let's see what else we have. Um, correcting people, it's an OCD thing for me, but is it fun? I mean, do you enjoy it? Um, not sure people find pleasure, but trying to assist, but do you enjoy it? Um, you know, that's, that's the part. I mean, I don't do things that I don't enjoy doing. Um, Let's see. Yes, Paco, if we make mistakes, others need to just move on. Well, wouldn't be. It'd be nice if that was the case. Uh, let's see what else we have. Anna says, I always appreciate being corrected and I don't mind correcting others. To me, it's two-way helpfulness. What about the method, Anna? Uh, do you suppose there are kind ways to correct others and unkind ways to correct others, or is it a blanket? Um, let's let's see. Um, I would love to know what you think. Um, let's see. What is the WhatsApp number for MB Restaurants for Fabor? I suppose that's Michael Buford. Um, I don't know what the answer to that question is. Uh, let's see what else we have. Also, in this era of disinformation, I don't find it rude when people try to keep the record straight. Again, is there a nice way to do it or a no nice to way to do it? Is it, is there a fun pleasurable, rewarding way to give and receive correction or not. Uh, let's see what else. Da, 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 da. Any news about Santa Barbara Street? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, I haven't seen any headlines to that effect. Um, da, 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 da. 
Thank you, Liz. Correcting versus helping is all in the attitude, tone, and timing. My thoughts exactly. Um, and, and I will continue to be an advocate of, of that. Uh, can you tell us a translation of swearing and swearing in in Spanish? I could, Paula, but Google can do that for you as well. Let's see. Is tomala supposed to mean too bad or tough luck? Not sure when to use it. You use it when somebody gets what they deserve. Um, let's see. I have a good relationship with the Salsa Isle, but my other end, not so much. I hear you. Um, what is the availability of marijuana in PV needed for pain control? Newbie to this group, thank you. Um, you must not be a local, Leah, or maybe you are. Uh, marijuana is not legally available in Puerto Vallarta. Um, if you find it or if you get it, you're getting it at your own risk. Let's see what else. Oh, good. Somebody that knows the avocado sauce I mentioned. Thank you very much, John. You make me feel good about that. Um, Elvin loves Erdes. Delicious. And we now can get it at Target here in the U.S. It's delicious. I remember when I was starting to, when I was living in Boston and I used to be able to get the Erdes salsas in, in, in Boston. I would get so giddy about it. This is just wonderful. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, <laughs> Ryan says, I discovered quickly that mild in Mexico is not the same as mild in Maryland. I love it. Um, and somebody else that knows the salsa, the creamy chipotle is the bomb. I love it. Um, actually, I love the fact, Pat, I love the fact that you said the bomb. Because one of the things that I've been saving for one of these broadcasts is the Spanish equivalent of saying the bomb. And that is one of my favorite expressions. You may or may not know it. Um, and, um, and there you have it. Uh, let's see. Thanks for the welcome. I am not sure Paco saw my question. Um, I am not sure that I saw your question either, Leah. I'm looking at them as they come. I usually have a closer eye on questions addressed to me when they have a little cue at the beginning of the question. Uh, let's see what else we have. So all red caps mean calienta? Uh, no, I did not say that. All I said is that in the Erdes avocado salsa, it comes in two flavors. Uh, the one with the green cap is milder than the one in the red cap. I don't know that all red caps mean caliente or hot. Um, let's see what else. Ooh, correction depends on the person and the relationship you have with that person. I welcome corrections to my Spanish, but then again, I do professional translations, so I consider corrections to be helpful to my job and in English. I do find myself myself something of a grammar and spelling Nazi. My friends know that I make my observations with only good intentions, but you hit a couple of key points here. It all depends on the relationship you have with other people, and you mentioned your friends, Matthew, so I hear you. We correct one another when we know one another, and one another is an important factor here. Um, we meet each other on a daily basis, but we don't necessarily know one another, you and I. No, I'm not meaning you specifically, Matthew, although one day you actually admitted to making an asshole -ish comment, uh, uh, and then you made the asshole -ish comment, and I remember that day, because you're like, well, this is going to sound like an asshole, but boom, and then you, were, you, and then you went and you sounded like an asshole. Uh, and I know that you didn't mean to, but, uh, but yes, correction depends on the person and the relationship, and that is the beautiful side of... Um, human relationships. Oh, Sheil, you wanted to see more Luna, and I put something together, and I forgot to load it on the broadcast, but uh, I will have more Luna for you. Uh, let's see what you have to say. I believe when people feel the desperate need so badly enough to correct other people, especially in public, is just their burning egotistical desire to show up some kind of superiority over others, 
which normally ends up backfiring on them, which shows their lack of deplorum. Anyway, keep up the great work. Oh my God, you totally nailed it. There was also this nice lady, and I didn't get on her case because she's a birder. Yesterday, I mentioned that seagulls, um, seagulls uh, have a way with uh, turtle hatchlings, and uh, and she wrote me, and uh, and she said, oh, there's no such thing as seagulls, um, and I'm like, okay. And, uh, and then I did some, some searching. And yes, seagulls is a generic word, but there's no such thing as seagulls. I mean, Jonathan Livingston would be totally disappointed to learn that he doesn't even exist. Uh, but I digress. Um, let's see what else we have. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Thank you. I agree with that. Um, Correction should be done with kindness and not being sarcastically. My favorite way of correcting Angela is by asking for permission first. Uh, and that's just me. Uh, let's see. Susie. Okay, you're back. Thanks for the clarification. When I come down there, I usually stay at Los Arcos. Would love to come down for a longer time and have never been in a grocery store. I just wonder, do you ever make meatloaf, chops, anything other than Mexican? Um, I do. I do. I can, and thank God, I'm curious about cooking. I mean, I can whip out Indian food. I can whip out Thai food. I can whip out all kinds of things just because we are... Um, we are we have that ability we have th those those kinds of ingredients here but back to you susie if you come down a lot and uh, you are staying at los arcos and i don't know how many times you've been here and i don't know how long you stay but when i hear you asking questions uh about whether you we ever make meatloaf it makes me wonder where your comfort level is when you come down to Puerto Vallarta. And wherever it is, I'm sure it's okay for you. But it would seem that if you've come down here a number of times and uh, and you are staying at Los Arcos and yet you don't know whether we make meatloaf, um, it would seem to me that you are missing out on some of the Mexican experience. Um, your questions are legitimate. The first time and only time that I went to Colombia, I was in Cartagena for work and I had similar questions of people, but I made sure that I visited places. I made sure that I walked into supermarkets. So maybe Susie, your next trip down to Mexico, you would benefit greatly if you would just walk into a grocery store instead of, um, just staying at Los Arcos. Um, let's see what else. I think correcting grammar is rude. Um, I agree with you, Linda. If I spent time correcting your Spanish attempts here at Coffee and Headlines, we would all end up with a Spanish lesson or a very boring program or maybe both. Um, Bill comments, we have both of those salsas in our pantry well in our refrigerator all the time. Awesome. Um, being corrected can sometimes hurt the receiver even if it is given in a kind way manner. Which is why, Julie, this is why I always ask for permission. Um, let's see. Luke asks for a big shout out to our special cookie lady. Be specially generous when we see her next. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> That's exactly how I felt, Maggie as in Peggy, when I read the comment. And I was getting ready to give this lady some shit. But then I looked at her, I went and trolled her, and I saw that she is the founder of the Puerto Vallarta birding uh, something or other. There's such a thing as the Puerto Vallarta birders or, or whatever. And I thought to myself, well, she must know what she's talking about, and I'm going to not, not, not get uh, feisty or anything. 
But yeah, I also felt like my life has been a lie. I mean, I read the book about Jonathan Livingston. I used to love the soundtrack with, you know, by Neil Diamond. And I was devastated for a minute and then I quickly got over it. Uh, let's see what else we have. Um, my comfort level is on the street eating a street taco in Puerto Vallarta. That's good to know, John. Um, I think we can all stretch our comfort levels a little bit uh, wherever we can or whenever we can. And this brings us to a um, to the end of our broadcast. And I always appreciate your point of view. I do not mean to get confrontational uh, about the corrections. It's just so much against my upbringing to go around life correcting people. It's not something that I enjoy doing. And uh, and I'm always very careful on how I proceed, even with my closest friends. So it's not me being confrontational. I'm just trying to understand why some of you just seem to get such a fucking kick out of it. Um, and, and I guess I will continue to be in the dark as far as that is concerned, but that's okay. We can all be in the dark about this, that, and the other. That's the end of our broadcast. I hope you had a good time today. And as always, I hope to see you again sometime in the near future. Tomorrow is Friday. We're going to explore Marina Vallarta, and we'll see how that goes. Have a great day, and stay in touch. 